Hey guys, so before we start this, I want to tell you that this is a part of a big course that I've made, the Particle System Masterclass. And yeah, you can get the HDRI from here, so just go to the link which I have down in the description below. Click on Preview, and here you can download this, okay? It's just, uh, this is for free, don't worry. And I, um, I will just put up here a little video of what we're actually going to make in this course, and then we'll start right in. And if you don't want to see it, you can just skip the video. See you guys. Okay, so we're gonna make this scene and yeah this is kind of how it looks like in the end it's really cool to make uh, it's quite easy as well and it's quite different than the particle system we're actually gonna use hairs later on um, so let's just jump into blender and start creating it so the first we're gonna do is um, let's delete the cube and the lamp and we're gonna add a plane and let me also put my screencast keys on. And we're gonna subdivide this plane. So we're going to edit mode, subdivide, subdivide, subdivide. Till we have 289 vertices. So we need this because we want to spawn all the hexagons on a particular vertice. So let's get our hexagon in here. We're gonna do that with a circle. And we're gonna give the circle six vertices. I'm gonna move the circle a little bit up. Scale it down and then just extrude around the Z axis, extrude again. Then I just right click, it snaps it back into place, and I click on Alt M and at center. So now they're merged there. Cool. So we're gonna give this a particle system, which is gonna be the hair in this case. And let's do advanced, just because we have also have rotation in here then as well. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to give the number the same amount as the vertices that we have, which is 289. So 289. And we want the source, we want them to emit from our vertices. Okay. And we do not really want it in a random order. So now you can see that it's very, yeah, grid-like. Grid so let's render. Here, go into render and do the object that we have, which is uh, this. And let's select the rotation, and we're gonna do this at none, so uh, we don't really have any rotation. And if you now look at the top, you can see that well, we do have our hexagons, but they're not really lined up the way that we would like to. Um, first thing would be the rotation. I want to rotate this for 90 degrees around the z-axis and you can see that nothing of this moved with it so if we apply our rotation then you can see we actually have our rotation um, if I scale this up you can make them touch each other like we want to it looks very cool but you can see that every row kinda works but then in between it messes up and we need to change this with the vertices of the plane itself so I'm gonna hide off this particle settings for right now and we need to play around with this so I found a way to do this and that is just um, well very easily said it's just moving this towards the x-axis so if you now play it you can see that it moved up uh, I did a bit far of course um, so we have to find a way to put it perfectly in the middle and that way is very easy to find and that is literally just look for this vertice which is next to the middle go into the item and that is uh, 0.125 meters so we just copy 0.125 and now we're gonna select every other edge loop 
and move this around the x-axis. So um, I'm just gonna paste our 0 0.1 to 5, but we want to have this in half, right? We want not to move it uh, one, <coughs> one unit up, but uh, half of it. So divide it by 2, that is 0 0.0625. And you can check it also, if you just select these, fill them up, and then subdivide, you can see that the middle of it is exactly where the middle of our uh, little vertice is. So, uh, that is good. So now if you play it, you can see that it matches up way, way better. The only thing that uh, is kind of messed up is that because we move this around, it's not really a square anymore. Um, so we just need to scale this around the y-axis till it fits together so um, yeah this would be good awesome so here are all of our hexagons but if you play it you can see that yeah nothing really happens and this is why we're gonna use a modifier we're gonna use the displacement modifier here and we're gonna use a new texture which will end up in this texture tab and we're gonna use the type as clouds. So we can see that the texture is for sure moving around, like it's for sure using the displacement. But our hexagons are not working with it. If we go to the modifier step, then we have to put this displacement before the particle settings. So put it up, and now you can see that everything moved. Awesome. So now you can play a little bit around with the strength of this. Yeah, you can put it lower, or you can play around with the cloud texture itself. So if you want, if you do the size up for the cloud texture, you can see that we have a different kind of um, displacement in here. But if we play this, you can see that really nothing happens. And this is because we are not moving this displacement modifier with anything. So I'm gonna go and add a empty in here. So shift a empty plane axis. And if we go into our displacement modifier, you can actually do the texture coordination from local to object. And we can select our empty. So if I now move this empty around, you can see that our hexagons also move around. So now you can still change the, the cloud texture and all that stuff and just try around some animations. So this is very cool, but how do we make this loop? Because you can see that, yeah, it might be very hard to loop this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a curve in here, which is gonna be the circle. So this circle curve, so I'm gonna hide our plane for a second just so we can focus on our circle. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this empty move around this circle because every time it hits this point, it just loops. So it keeps looping around the circle. So um, yeah, we have our empty, go into here, object constraints, and we're gonna follow path. So now this empty, now we need, so now we need to choose a target, which is going to be the base just circle. So now we only have to animate our path. And if we animate it, you can see that it will just follow this curve. And every time it will just follow this curve. Uh, you can see that at 100 frames, it already loops. So we can essentially make this 100. But if you go to your curve, you can also change your path animation and do the frames to 200. Uh, I'm just gonna do 100 right now, so it's a bit more, uh, yeah, simple for us. Who cares, right? So if we're gonna get our plane in here, you can see that we have a looping animation. Very, very, very cool. As I said before, now you can also change the size and you can play around with this animation. Right now, this animation looks a bit faster than what I've made, and that is just because we have less frames. So the way to do that is just select our path animation, put the frames to 200 and uh, also the end at 200. And now you'll see that it will take a longer time, which will make it look uh, slower. So let's get a little bit more into the materials for this particular hexagon. First, I'm going to give it also the name hexagon and we're going to make this the black one hexagon a black. And I will get a new screen in here, which will be our shader editor. So I essentially made a very easy material. So let's go in here, hex black. 
and I gave this a quite a dark color so around here not all the way black a metallic and the roughness I put all the way up at zero so this was my black color and this already looks way way better uh, what I also did is actually change the geometry a little bit so I gave this some uh, bevels so if you select everything So if I select this top part, a Ctrl B, and just give it uh, three bevels, this is good. Shade smooth. I used also some modifiers. I put a bevel modifier in here with a little bit more segments and the angle I put at the 30 degrees and the width can be a bit smaller. Somewhere like this. And also a nice subdivision in here just to make it a bit more smooth. I duplicated this and gave this duplicate another name and that is hexagon gold. Duplicated this color here and also renamed it to gold and put this base color to this hex code or just um, towards the yellow orange gold. And if you want to render this you can see that well, we can hardly see anything. This is because, first of all, I want to be in cycles. You do not have to be in cycles. I just like cycles a bit better than Eevee. So I jump into cycles and I go into the world and add an environment map. So environment, texture, color goes into the color and we're gonna choose our HDRI, which is gonna be our music hall. And right now, if we look, we can see uh, some way nice reflections happening so let's also put our camera in a better position with numpad 0 do lock camera to view and I'm gonna move into our scene personally I put the strength of this a little bit lower and let's look at our animation as you can see we only have black ones in here right now so what I have to do is select these both ctrl G and made a group out of them which is a collection and this is gonna just be the hexagons select our plane again and inside of our particle settings we're gonna render as collection instead of object and choose our hexagons and now we can use a count so I don't want them to be half half like half gold half black I actually want for every six black ones I want there to be one gold one so let's look and this looks way more interesting in my uh, opinion but in my end result you can see that we know uh, we don't really have a lot of reflections in the top of our hexagons and this is just because I put a huge plane in here so plane move it up here rotate a little bit and this plane is gonna also give us a little bit of lighting so we're gonna make this a lamp Go back into the object and we're going to give this a new material. Um, well, no need to name it right now. Just going to delete the principal shader and add an emission node in here. And we're going to uh, put the strength a bit lower, maybe 0.3. And let's look at our render here. And now you can move around or even scale up your plane as needed. This is everything that we have and that is how you make the scene. If you're gonna render this, make sure you put a new map in the output and uh, render it as a PNG. And then just go into render and render animation. So every PNG will be output inside this map that you've chosen. I hope you guys learned a lot from this and let's go on to the next part.